Super Mario Bros. 3, a necessity for gracious living. Few video games in history have been as impactful as that of Mario Bros. 3, with some on release going as far as to refer to it as the greatest video game ever made. Essentially, it took everything great about the first game and built and improved on it in every conceivable way, arguably functioning as the crown jewel in the NES's library. Even more gamers would get to experience this classic as part of the Mario All-Stars pack for the Super Nintendo, which additionally went as far as to provide the title with a 16-bit overhaul. Super Mario Bros. 3 was more refined than ever. Moving even further through time, to a period whereby 2D side-scrollers were mostly being left behind, fortunately handheld gaming still had that genre covered, which would present yet another re-emergence of Super Mario Bros. 3. Functioning as the fourth entry in the Mario Advance series, this game was made available as part of the Nintendo Switch Online service just last month. So today is as good as any to cover this iteration of the game's most remarkable Aspect. The massive amount of additional levels it provides were locked off from most gamers when the title was released. Many of these newer stages are spectacular, so without further ado, let's discuss their history and what they contain. I am Lady Decade and these are the lost Super Mario Bros. 3 stages that we can finally play 20 years later. Before I continue, I just wanted to sincerely thank each of you for being here. YouTube doesn't seem to want to push content like this in the algorithm, so each of you like, comment and share really makes such a difference to me. If you're not subscribed already, I'd be so grateful if you'd subscribe now and then watch every single video that I have ever made. Now, back to the video. The Super Mario Advance titles on the Game Boy Advance were notable for several reasons. Not only did it allow us to play many console classics on a handheld for the first time, but these games would also include new features not present in the originals. Super Mario Bros. 3 on the GBA contained more content than any other enhanced re-release, although accessing it would be far from easy. This was because most of the new content was hidden and could only be unlocked by pairing the game with the Game Boy Advance e-reader. Two groups of these cards, referred to as series, were sold separately. By scanning them into the e-reader, players could unlock items, videos and, most significantly, new levels in the game. But for many gamers, there was one small problem. This was impossible. Unfortunately for myself and everyone else who lives on this continent, our version of Super Mario Advance 4 would disable the game's e-reader feature, thus making the new stages completely inaccessible. Nintendo never released the e-reader in Europe, so we were deprived of the additional action. So if you lived in America or Japan, you would have to tediously purchase additional cards to play new levels with the stages bypassing us altogether. Well, until now. Fortunately, the version of the game that is currently playable on the Nintendo Switch allows us to access all of the title's other goodness without needing to jump through multiple crazy hoops to be able to do so. Sure, this already happened with the re-release of the game on the Nintendo Wii U, but let's be honest, who cared about the Wii U? Nobody. So bearing this in mind, this presented me with the perfect opportunity to see what all of the fuss is about, and whether or not these extra stages are worth our time. While all accessible with the simple use of a menu today, depending on which card you swiped, as mentioned, would determine which stage you could access. The Wild Ride in the Sky card would come packed in a box with the game's cartridge in North America, with the card describing the additional stage as taking a wild ride in the sky, challenging players to nab coins while avoiding bullet bills. Like other stages in the game, advanced coins are scattered throughout, providing an additional challenge if wanted. 
This level contains features not seen in Super Mario Bros. previously, including steel lifts and diagonal bullet bills. For the Japanese to play this stage, the car would appear as part one of their card series, with this one depicting Wendy Cooper. Other card stages include the first four that had appeared in the first Super Mario Bros. games, only reimagined with Super Mario Bros. 3 all-star graphics. In fact, building on this, the water stage World 2-2 is reimagined as well, thus meaning there are recreations of all five key stages that could be enjoyed in the first Super Mario game. Fantastic. Stage cards would also come with a difficulty rating displayed on them, with cards showing 1 to 5 stars on them. A level known as sliding slopes is 2 stars for example and contains flippers and triangular blocks. More elements from other Mario games in the series. The pink triangle blocks would first appear in Mario World and the flippers have been taken from Yoshi's Island. Speaking of Yoshi's Island, when you get a star in that game, Mario can use the triangle blocks to run up walls and even along the top of ceilings. Elements like this surprise me as these are not features you would associate with Mario 3. Speaking of elements carried over, Vegetable Volley is very calm and based on the stage name alone. You can probably guess what you can do in this one. Like in Super Mario Bros. 2, you can pull vegetables from the ground and launch them at unsuspecting enemies. Speaking of vegetables, giant ones are also present, like what first appeared in Super Mario Advance. Mushrooms embedded into bubbles must be destroyed, poison mushrooms are here from the Lost Level, and charging chucks from Mario World are here to cause problems. Fortunately, they are no match for vegetables. But as awesome as this is, did you know that Super Mario Bros. 2 is really just a doki doki panic? <laughs> Doors O Plenty is a stage where, well, doors O Plenty. This is a maze like stage, which is very Super Mario World like. It's basically a ghost house style stage, like many that can be found in that game. There is a key and a key door to unlock, and a boss fight against Big Boo. Once again, this is a very different stage from what we are used to with Mario 3. Bombarded by bob is a much more traditional Mario 3 feeling, especially when we bear in mind that it looks like a dark land stage. There is even a boss battle against a boom boom at the end, something else that Mario 3 players will be accustomed to. Magical Notes Blocks is another less remarkable stage that involves bouncing and ascending by jumping on notes blocks to make it to the area's top. Furthermore, a stage called the Old Switcheroo revolves around using switches, but the piped full of plants level includes some more exciting features. This includes the emergence of horizontal Venus fire traps and a roulette block, yet another element carried over from Super Mario World. The stage's swinging bars of doom bring even more Super Mario World magic, including thwimps, the smaller variants variants of thwomps, bony beetles and more. Another stage in the game, Para Beetle Challenge, has a 5 star difficulty rating marked on its associated card. This is because the level features minimal solid ground, with gamers having to traverse the stage from Para Beetle to Para Beetle. The game also features a new airship stage known as Airship's Revenge, a notable stage because the level card connected to this one came bundled with the first shipment of Super Mario Advance 4 to Walmart stores across North America. We do not even have Walmart or exclusive collectible Mario cards in the UK, but I guess I can't complain, as at least we had Mr Blobby and they didn't. <laughs> Nightmare Fuel other stages include a musical trek, a reasonably standard level set in the sky, armoured airship, another airship stage, and ice dungeon, an ice themed stage. This one is notable though for including springboards, again like many an object that cannot be found in the traditional version of Super Mario Bros. 3. 
Soldiering on, we have a Sea of the Sky, a stage where gamers can utilise the flying leaves, triangular blocks and frog suit. While we won't run through every stage that can be found, I will continue to point out particularly cool moments. For example, in the ice-themed stage called Slip Sliding Away. It's interesting as it includes bump tees, enemies that would previously only be found within Super Mario Bros. 2. The stage known as the Towering Tour also includes features new to Super Mario Bros. 3, including moving snake blocks from Super Mario World and even seesaws from Yoshi's Island. It seems elements were taken to deliver this extra content from the previously released Super Mario Bros. Advance games. If we want to get a really un Mario Bros 3, how about a stage known as Groundwork? Just like in Super Mario Bros 2, Mario finds himself in a cavern of sand whereby he must dig his way to the bottom of the stage to progress. This level even includes those weird Sonic the Hedgehog looking enemies, an element plucked from Doki Doki Literature Club. It's also worth mentioning that the game offers a few more stages with 5 star difficulty ratings, such as Treacherous Halls, which has a Kaizo Mario Light sort of vibe to it. There's also No Time to Dawdle, a stage that must be beaten in less than 20 seconds, and Bowser's Last Stand, where Mario must head to Bowser's castle and take on the Lizard King again. As usual, this contains elements you do not expect to see in Super Mario Bros 3, such as Magic Coopers continuing to provide further reasons why these levels are worth playing. Very nice. I'm thoroughly impressed with these stages, they contain far more than I was expecting. I expected each of them to be made up of assets that can be found in older stages, not elements that have been taken from all across the Mario Advance games. The best way I can describe this previously locked off content is a celebration of all the Mario remakes found on the GBA, with these brand new for their time levels functioning as the perfect swan song for the highly entertaining Mario Advance series. It's a shame that these levels were blocked off by this stupid awkward card system back in the day, with Europe being deprived of these lovingly crafted levels altogether. If Super Mario Advance 4 had seen its initial release in the days of DLC, then this would have been the perfect additional content worth paying for. Even today, these stages provide a decent incentive for consumers to pay for the Switch Online services. If you have tried these stages, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Maybe you even own some of these stupid cards. Anyway, if you wanted to learn more about Super Mario Bros. history, check out my upload on the lost found PC port of the NES's greatest platformer. Lastly, thank you to everyone who has subscribed after watching this video and for watching to the end. Bye!